hey what's up guys today in this video i'm going to touch upon a few small small features that are required for the entire application to behave properly after the authentication mechanism is added so the first thing is obviously that based on our development so far we know that when we are logging into our application we drop a cookie so let's just say if we go over here inside this we can see these are some of the things and i will clear it out refresh the page and i see there are no cookies as of now now when i log in this token which is coming from sanctum right it is stored over here now what i have done is when i click on this thing and i click on log out i am redirected back to the login page and the cookie is cleared a very straightforward thing but let's look at how I have done it. So obviously the first thing is it's the code is inside my top navigation. So we'll go inside the top nav index.tsx file. And as you can see over here, what I have done is this is my logout link. So initially it was an A link. I have changed that because it is no more an A link. It will be, you know, a, it's a span tag where I have the text and on click of that I am calling this handle logout function. Now this handle logout function is going to obviously handle the event of click. So I have type hinted it. The event is react.mouse event and I'm saying that inside that it's an HTML span element. The first thing we will do is you know, do an event.prevent default even though it's not a form submit. I feel that it's a good idea to you know, call this function. <coughs> okay, and then I have a try catch because it's an HTTP service call. So as you can see, this function is an async function. So inside the try, the first thing that we do is call the HTTP post service, um, calling the logout URL with an empty post object. Once that is done, we remove the cookie and we push the user to the home page. And because the home page has the check of the login authenticated user or not, based on that, it, it is redirecting the user to the login page. Okay, so I didn't want to have multiple places where I am logging, re redirecting the user to the login page because then if I change the URL, right, I'll have to do that on multiple places. So I feel that is the better way. So what happens in the logout URL is pretty straightforward. So what happens in the logout URL is pretty straightforward. I'll quickly show you because this is something which I have already done in my uh, live video. But this post URL is calling the auth controller logout, takes the current user, current access token is taken and it is deleted. And then we return a 204 response. So that is how when we log in, right, I get this token the value is five dash rather pipe and then something and when i log out that is gone the token is deleted as well because the next time when i log in we'll see the sixth token right so this is how the logout functionality is implemented um, on the front end as well as we are handling it at the back end using sanctum so one more thing which i wanted to cover in this video is the validation messages that we need to show coming from the server side. For example, right now this is the correct password, but if for example, I have a wrong username and password, and if I try to log in, it says the provided credentials are not correct. This can happen only after a server side validation, right? If I go over to my network tab, click over here, as you can see right now I'm getting a status code of 422. So what is happening? Let's just look at the server side code first. So this is my login con login route auth controller login function. So I'm first doing a validation, which is fine. Then I get the user. And if I don't get the user or if the hash check doesn't pass, right, then I throw this validation message. And that's what is causing this status code of 422. But then how do we show that on the UI on a formic form? So 
there are a couple of things that needs to be done i will close out these things and let's go to our login form and understand what all things i have done so the first thing that i have done is there's this function from my util service which basically what it does is it gets two parameters the error object and set error function it creates a constant with object keys it maps each item and in the set error function right it basically calls the function item i mean it calls this set error function with the item and this is just something which i got from my oops sorry stack overflow uh, findings which what i understand is it shows all the error messages coming from the server side if you look at this thing right the response errors is an array so what it does is it joins all the error items with you know li one line below the other okay and that is what kind of you know creates that final thing oops i made some mistake let me see fine this is correct okay so this is the function it's a utility function that i have created now how am i using it so let's go over here obviously something to do during the failure of a login right so we have a try catch now if we go into the catch block there can be multiple reasons of failure we can have a 422 which is an um, validation error there can be api throttling requests errors 500 error a lot of things right but in this case we are specifically targeting the 422 validation error on that i send the error object by calling the utility function i send the error response which is coming from the server and i pass the set field error how do i get this well this is something which i destructured from the formic helper on form submit which is getting called on the submitting of my formic form right i am destructuring that function and that function is being passed to this utility function once that is done the errors are set so once the errors are set right using this helper function um where you know we are using this set field error utility from the formic helper what happens is you know this errors object gets populated and because our form element already does the you know task of displaying the form field error basically what happens is this thing is getting displayed and that is how the server side validation error messages are displaying below the fields as expected so yeah these are the two things that i wanted to cover in this video the logout and the validation message so thanks for watching guys if you like this video do click on the thumbs up icon and don't forget to subscribe to my channel